Hey guys, Northwest Wilson here. Uh, one of my friends uh, called me up the other day, said he is cutting some trees down, having some trees cut down at his house, and wanted to know if I wanted the wood. Well, of course. I heat with wood. Uh, I want to show you guys uh, how exactly I go through processing some wood and maybe give some people some tips on uh, what to look for if you go on Craigslist for free wood. I personally have never paid for uh, any of the firewood that I have. I uh, heat with wood in the winter times, the the, uh, the fall, the winter, and then uh, early spring. So I heat with I heat I burn about oh anywhere from two and a half to three cords, maybe more every year. Uh, it saves us a lot of money on propane. We're on propane out here. Uh, propane can get pretty expensive, especially when you're heating a, a bigger house. Um, I like the ambiance of burning firewood. I think it's uh, it's really nice at the end of the day. It's a different kind of heat. Um, so I'm hoping that this video can show you guys what to look for uh, if you're going out on Craigslist to look at some free, some quote unquote free wood. I think we've all, uh, if you guys have done any uh, firewood retrievals, sometimes the ads uh, on Craigslist for quote unquote free wood or free firewood can be a little bit misleading. Uh, sometimes you end up having to, you know, go through a series of fences or uh, up and down some serious grades. You know, if you're really desperate and you have some time, you know, you can make some decent scores on firewood doing that. I personally go for the low hanging fruit. I like the stuff that's either roadside or, you know, within, you know, maybe 50 feet from where I can um, park my truck or trailer. Uh, you know, the, the whole point of getting free wood is to heat with your house for free. It saves a ton of money if you do it right. And wood retrieval can be time consuming uh, and it can be a lot of work if you don't really think and plan out exactly uh, how you're gonna retrieve it. So we're gonna pretend like this is a uh, free Craigslist ad for wood. I'm gonna show you guys what I look for in, in a free wood scenario. Uh, and hopefully that will give you guys uh, some first timers or maybe people trying to get into heating with wood, give you some ideas of exactly what, uh, what that's gonna look like. But anyway, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, show you this, uh, my log splitter here. Uh, pick this up. Uh, I want to say year and a half ago, uh, maybe two years ago. I'd have to look. Time just goes by really fast, guys. This is a 37-ton rugged split uh, log splitter. This is an overseas splitter. It's a uh, one that is made in China, and then it is shipped in via crate uh, in crate um, over to the East Coast. I believe this was out of um, Massachusetts. I'd have to double check on that, but I think it is. Uh, this is a four-way splitter with a push-through design. It has a, a Honda clone engine on it. Uh, this is the, basically, guys, th this is, a, it's badged as a Raven, but this is, it's a 400 and uh, 20 cc, 15 horsepower, electric start Raven engine. Um, I did mount a hour meter on here to track uh, services, oil changes, all that good stuff, kind of how long I get out of a tank of fuel. This is a Harbor Freight Predator engine. Guys, this is the same one that you can buy uh, on, on shelf at Harbor Freight. They're, they're sold in several other different applications, uh, wood splitters, I've seen them in uh, trash pumps. Uh, there's a whole different, I mean, I, you see people put them on go-karts. Um, also, people will swap them on to, uh, Lawnmower engines, obviously you need a different shaft, but these, uh, you see them in, in generators. The, this is kind of a, a one size fits all engine. Um, it's it, 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 plenty of power. Um, it runs this 37 ton just fine. This log splitter guys is in the collapse position. So this is in the travel position right now. Um, I am gonna break it down and show you guys uh, exactly how um, how it does split wood. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good splitter. I've had uh, I've done I've put probably 10 cords Maybe a little more maybe 12 cords through it so far uh, It's it's processed wood uh, faster than one guy could ever imagine to keep up with it. Let's put it that way um, this wood splitter uh, really to be effective you need to have at least uh, an operator on the controls and then you need to have someone feeding you rounds um, this log splitter has a log lift on it so the big heavy rounds you don't have to 
you know, guys, the, the vertical splitters, uh, you know, the ones that flip vertical, th this one, this one is a horizontal only splitter, meaning it does not change position. This, this is it. Some of the other splitters, uh, big box stores that you can, you can tilt them 90 degrees and then you, you, you split, imagine my fist is ram splits down vertically and, and into the wood. Uh, you know, th those work. Um, and for, for someone who, you know, might burn a cord a year or, you know, split reel occasionally, that's really all you need. But if you're, if you're wanting to process firewood to burn several cords a year, or, you know, possibly have a little firewood business going on, on the side, you really got to have something that's not going to wear you out. And this machine really saves your back. You, uh, you, you can roll your rounds right up onto the platform and you pull a lever. You have two controls this this one of these ones runs the ram another one runs the the arm on the side and then this basket here flips outward and catches the splits that get pushed through on the four-way and this is removable you can either do a four-way or a uh, just a two-way traditional split you know uh it's been a, it's been a great machine but you know you really got a plan on um uh, uh, if you want to be productive with this machine you do need a second hand um ideally if you really want to get the most productivity out of this machine three guys uh three guys one guy feeding you rounds one guy operating the machine and then one guy uh stacking or loading it will keep three guys busy uh, you will blow through the rounds with this machine if you have three guys, I have had three people work in this machine uh, once, and unfortunately, I didn't keep track of cordage per hour. I would, I would, my best estimate would say if, if all of your rounds are staged and close to the machine and everyone's there ready to work, I really think you could probably touch uh, one and a half to maybe two cords an hour if, if, if everything's really um, running at top notch. It, it is a fast machine. You can, it, it will, it will wear one guy out trying to keep up with it. So as a guy who mostly like myself that goes out and splits on my own, uh, you got to pace yourself because the machine will wear you out. It, it's, um, just, just feeding the machine and stacking it. You actually spend more time feeding the machine and stacking the splits than, than you do, um, splitting them. So anyway, uh, like I said, it's an overseas Chinese made machine. Um, I have had a little bit of issues with it. Um, I have, I've replaced the um, ignition uh, starter and electrical components with that. Not exactly sure what happened, guys, um, but I, I did replace that. Um, I've also replaced both of these uh, valves. Uh, I think that they had they were leaking here on the back side of the valve, and I was getting some hydraulic fluid. Not not a ton, guys, but enough to where you're like, no, oh, this isn't right, and it's super annoying. So. Um, I contacted the manufacturer, like I said, Rugged Made. Uh, this is a Rugged, Rugged Made, Rugged Split, a 37 ton log splitter. Contacted them uh, via email and they have been very good. Um, I will say they, they sent me these out, I think is a two day express air um, on both of these valves. Uh, no cost shipping, uh, no issues on warranty. They sent them out to me and said, sorry about the hassle. Uh, hope these ones work better. And, and so far they have. Um, I did replace one of these valves, uh, this one recently, this one I replaced like a month ago, have not used it really since, splitter's been sitting, um, I am behind on wood splitting, I need to get going on it, so uh, we're going to, I'm going to load this thing up, we're going to put it behind um, one of my vehicles and we're going to drag it out on site, we're going to drop this thing off, and, um, but first I do have some logs in the driveway uh, that my father-in-law, he had some he has some real, uh, you know, crotch cut, kind of nasty, uh, you know, tight, you know, knotty grain uh, wood that he just couldn't get through with a with a maul. So we're going to bust those up real quick. Uh, I'm going to show you got give you guys a quick video on uh, doing some doing some logs and uh, get that split up before I uh, leave here with the machine. So so this is the splitter in the ready to operate position. You have your catching tray here your log lift here this actually goes all the way down to the ground and you can roll on some some logs and then hit the hit the controls and then it it actually lifts it up and onto your splitting table uh, this is just a little stop here so that the logs don't roll onto you and then this is the removable four-way wedge just slides on there like that um, I don't use the four-way a ton 
uh, you got to really be in the right size material in my opinion to really use this thing effectively uh, I really think that the that these arms these little fins here should have been up another inch I think that I think that would have been a little bit better but you know if you're into you know 10 inch rounds you know it, it actually works really well if you've got a lot of 10 inch stuff I think it does perfect you know 10s 11s it does pretty well with that once you start getting up into the 12s and the 13 14 inch stuff it, it almost makes more work but I do enjoy it. it it does it does it does work well on some material so I, I do always bring it along you just never know so this is the wood uh, that my father-in-law couldn't get through is some you know it's it, it, weird angle stuff and you know just a lot just real knotty you can see some knots coming out there so he dropped this off and said hey would you mind splitting that for me i said sure absolutely so we'll we'll run this thing and uh kind of show you guys how it works uh so this this is standard starting procedure for one of these uh raven 15 horse 420 cc motors uh, like i said I've, ha I've had a little bit of issue with this electronic ignition it, it, it's almost like it's not getting a, uh, a great um, a great power to the starter. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, I, like I said, I've replaced the starter. Um, I've replaced the ignition. Not exactly sure what is going on with that. I, I, I'm kind of to the point where I want to load test the battery, although I don't think that's the problem. So, all right, uh, choke is in the, your choke's in the choke position, full choke. Your fuel is on. We have fuel in it. So, um, and then this is your manual throttle. So. We'll, let's throttle this thing up and see if we can get it to go. So it has, this hasn't been started in a while. Um, so let's, let's keep going. See, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, we're getting there. Maybe it is a battery. Uh, see, I don't know what's going on here. I just don't know. Huh. Got fuel in there. I don't know. This this is um, it's discouraging. We can try rope starting this thing and see uh, if fuel's on. Let's turn this into the on position. Let's see what happens. Battery's not old, but you know it is a flooded, <laughs> flooded battery, flooded cell battery, and you know this thing does vibrate a lot. So I know that's vibrations, especially that high frequency vibrations, real hard on batteries. So who knows? Uh, I'm gonna get you guys set up on a stand so you can watch me split this wood, and this will give you kind of a brief demonstration um, of what this log splitter will do. And then we are going to put this thing back into the tow position and we're going to haul it over to a friend's house. Uh, may not split tonight, but I'd like to get the machine over there tonight. And, uh, and then I'll show you guys what to look for in a free wood situation. So, all right.
All right, guys. Well, that kind of gives you an idea of what this thing will do. The angle I shot that at may not be the best to actually see the action the action table here. Um, when we get to the uh, to the house that we're going to be splitting more wood at, I'll get a better angle. But you know, this is about I don't know 15 minutes worth of work, something like that. Uh, you know, pretty decent wood pile. And uh, this uh, this wood that I was going through, um, it was here for a reason. It was uh, not, he was not able to get through this with a traditional splitting ax or maul. Uh, I think he took a few swings at it and realized how, uh, how much twisted grain was in this wood. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but you may have heard the machine bog down several times. I mean, you know, you're dealing with stuff like that. You know, it's really tough to swing a maul at something that it's a you know real uh, disjointed piece it's real crooked but um yeah this is what log splitters are good at is getting through that stuff that just you just can't get through with them all i mean here you know here's a great example of that i mean you know <laughs> good luck that is that's tough stuff to get through uh, with a maul or an axe <clears throat> but this kind of gives you an idea of, of how it works um it's it's a it's a pretty good setup and i think as you guys can see having manpower is critical because you know you have to stop and reload and stop and reload and um if you have and then you're left with this because you don't have someone on the other end catch, catching all this stuff so it pays to have it pays to have some help when you're doing this um, if you want this to be a quick and easy process otherwise it's a it's a lot for one guy um, but it does get through the wood quickly as you can see and if you notice i did not have the four-way on um, the four-way stuff just doesn't work too good in this real knotty um, material it's easier to just kind of go piece by piece and and just keep having them um, i've always found that's easier uh, also, one thing I forgot to mention about this splitter <clears throat> is if you notice the cycle times, you know, the, it takes a while uh, for the ram to get back in place. You, you know, there's a, I think this is 30 inches. So this is designed, um, you know, like to use on the East Coast where a lot of those guys out there heat with wood, uh, boiler wood. That They have um, outdoor wood burning stoves that heat their water and uh, their house, all that stuff. And, and so they're burning, they're, they're not burning 16, 18 inch stuff, they're burning 30 inch stuff. Um, but what, what's interesting is you can take this choke and you basically, this push plate comes all the way out like a stroke on the ram. And then this piece drops in right here, just like that. And then what that does is it limits the stroke, okay, to like 20 inches um, instead of 30. And um, so it stops right here which is it doesn't seem like much but it um it saves a ton of time i mean it's it, the ram's like right there so um, it cuts your cycle time down big time i didn't really mess with it um doing this because um i had such different length stuff out here and uh i wasn't i'm not looking at you know speed right now this is such a small amount of wood <clears throat> but when i get into the other stuff that i will take you to um, i will set that stroke limiter and it definitely speeds things up so anyway, I um, hope you guys got a good look at this uh, machine. If this is a machine that you've considered or you're thinking about, um, I, I do recommend it. Um, like I said, I didn't definitely install that tongue jack and you kind of see how I, how, how I have that stowed there so that uh, the splitting table can go on. Highly recommend a tongue jack. Um, and if you do buy new from them, you know, if you do have an issue with valves, they will stand behind it. At least they did for me. And um, guys, I'm thinking now that I made this video that my battery just may not be turning this motor over fast enough. <clears throat> so that's something I have to look at. But as you notice, it did start really good um, by rope start. No issues there. It doesn't, I'm not appearing to see, I'm not see any leaks. Just there is a little bit right there. It goes out the um the fill port there i'm still trying to figure that out i i don't know why that's doing that um i think if i had some criticisms about this machine it would be the hydraulic system um sometimes i can get that thing not to leak it's this little spout here uh it's got a as you can see it's got a, a, a breather right there and i'm pretty sure that when fluid's coming back into there it's spitting out I'm not sure what to do about that <clears throat> um i'm gonna i'm gonna keep messing with it i did talk to him at rugged main and they said um, spin it around a different direction because i think the fill the fill stick the dipstick actually acts as like a ramp for it to come up and out through that hole 
So maybe if I face it the other direction away from the return, the hydraulic return, um, you know, that, I don't know guys, uh, maybe that'll help. Um, so I, yeah, if I had a criticism with the machine, it would be, it would be that, it would just be like, it would just be saying that there's always a little bit of hydraulic fluid somewhere on this machine. Um, it's never been a true dry runner. Although I will say that the new valves appear to not be leaking. So that's, 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 there's a win. Um, motor's good. Um, I do recommend an hour meter. Um, these things are like, I don't know, five or six bucks on Amazon. There's the name. It's a, it's a Doe Cooler, Doe Cooler brand. Um, I got, I have 29 and a half hours on the machine so far. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend that. It's you, you guys, it's real easy to slip behind on oil changes and all that good stuff. It's important to keep good oil in the small, small engine stuff. If you want it to last um yeah other than that i've been really happy with it like i said put about 10 cords through it assembly uh is involved if you are not mechanically inclined or you don't have a decent a, a, a good selection of basic hand tools um this is going to be a lot for you to put together it, this took me uh, i want to say about 10 hours to put together uh, it's a lot of assembly and the paper directions are not very good uh it's basically says refer to our youtube video and i referred to the youtube video and i ended up having to pause it several times throughout the video and you know rewind and rewatch and rewind and rewatch <coughs> uh, to see how this went together so yeah i'd, I'd give it on a, a if i had to give it a grade on ease of assembly and instructions uh man i'd have to give this thing a c minus uh, in terms of that it really there's a lot to be desired in terms of assembly instructions and you do have to have a basic knowledge of kind of hydraulic systems and how this stuff goes together um but other than that yeah it's it's been a good machine would i buy it again yeah i would um look around at your big box store splitters you know they're two grand for something that just does vertical and horizontal you still got to muscle the rounds i mean i know you guys saw that hydraulic arm lift um and 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 how that just lifts the biggest rounds up with ease i want to say it's got a 300 pound rating on it which uh, i absolutely agree with that I, I i can stand on this and it will not tip it over uh and it's plenty strong it is plenty strong i am sure i've had all of 300 pounds of wood on that before um, so that the splitting arm is really what sold it to me. The log lift is what sold this machine to me. Uh, if you've done any kind of wood splitting with big rounds, uh, heavy soaking wet rounds, you know how hard it is to get these rounds onto the table. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that, 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 that's the kind of stuff that burns people out on firewood is just the amount of physical labor that's involved and uh, a lot of it is uh people enjoy doing the chainsaw work and the bucking of the rounds i enjoy it uh, a lot of people kind of get lost with it when it comes to splitting because they're either swinging a uh you know six to ten pound maul and that will make an old man out of you in a hurry it's one thing to do for you know split a few rounds for the for a weekend campfire that's a whole different story sure i'll i mean i would if it came down to splitting three or four rounds am i gonna drag out am i gonna drag out my log splitter you know to split three or four rounds uh to to grab and throw in the back of the truck for just a weekend campfire no i'm not but you know guys if you're looking at splitting a large amount of wood uh, or heating with wood yearly where you know you're going to be going through one two or three cords of wood you know it's smart to make the investment in a splitter you can rent them um, that's another option as well but if you are going to heat with wood you know year after year after year it pays to just make the investment in the machine you do not have to go buck wild with this one guys i want to say this one i paid thirty one hundred dollars for um thirty one 3145 something to that tune and that was shipped to my door uh freight was included there was no sales tax so i was under 3200 dollars for the machine shipped to my house um, i did have to buy hydraulic fluid for it uh, that is a little expensive i want to say 10 gallons 12 gallons somewhere around there um so i mean yeah guys it's a substantial investment i mean this is not something you're uh, you know, you're just going to buy on a whim. You have to be committed to wood splitting and you have to realize that they're going to be doing this for a while to make, make this thing make sense. 
Um, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to a lot of other people that I've seen that own this machine on YouTube. Um, outside with Scheib is one of the guys that has this machine and he really splits with it. Uh, he, he knocks out videos all the time. Uh, he really, um, and he's made some mods to his machine that are really impressive. So if you want to see another one of these machines on YouTube uh, and show how he's done some, and he'll show you how he's done some modifications. He's actually got a, uh, an arm that comes up here that has an adjustable, um, an adjustable splitting wedge on it, which I think is pretty slick. Um, that is a really good mod. I have considered that doing that to this one. Um, I am not, uh, I just am not committed on time right now to, to take on a project like that, but uh, I would definitely consider that. Check out his channel, Outside with Scheib, and I think uh, if you're on the fence about um, this machine, I hope I hope this video kind of gives you an idea of what to look for, uh, maybe answer some of your questions, check out some other people's videos with this machine. And as always, guys, if you uh, like this kind of content, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you guys own one of these machines, tell me what you think about it. Uh, if you think I'm doing something wrong or you think there's something I could improve on, um, whether it's videos or the channel, please post up. And uh, I will catch you on the next one.